just on the Dublin game, did you, did you see anything from it or indeed anything from some of the media reporting? Pat Spillane's been, been quoted as saying a lot of things, Joe Brawley as well. Do you think there is that little bit of a chink in Dublin's armour? I mean, there's a lot of people who've come out in Dublin's defence, a couple of their past players, Bernard Brogan, Paul Flynn. What's your take on it? Yeah, well, I was qualify everything I say here by saying I did only catch the highlights of the game and it was the same with the extra game. I didn't watch it live, but caught the highlights. Like, it wasn't just the golf, like the hurling was on, like the clash with the monster hurling. It was right there for me to go out of my way to spend eight quid on a game I'm not even going to watch, not to justify my non-watching of Dublin, but... Yeah, the, like the, the extra game, the handicap was 23. And like Dublin, it, it's it's a good barometer to talk about the handicap because Dublin have, have cleared it, particularly in the last three years. I think it's something like nine of their last 10 games going into this year or something outrageous like that. And the extra game, I couldn't believe the score coming from Wexford Park at all. Like Division 4 team, like the quotes from the Wexford manager before the game, like we're going to, like it was just, it, they'd already accepted defeat. And for them mm. to get so close to Dublin, it wasn't a case that, Wexford were a dairy waiting in the long grass that you thought were impressive. And then it seemed that normality resumed. Again, I was doing this just watching the score on Twitter, and when Dublin were so far ahead at half time, I was like, geez, how, how do we ever doubt them? And the second half performance, from what I saw, was absolutely atrocious. Um, and I will also say that Mead should have had a penalty 3 2 down in the first half, a stonewall penalty when Brian Fenton, you know, basically, mm. you know, all over the the meat attacker and Dublin got literally the pen a penalty for the same fell a few minutes later. So meat or meat fans are rightly to be frustrated. They're they're also right to be frustrated that Colin Morocco Mead man didn't bring it up on the Sunday game, but that's another story. But like there you are, Sean. Like that's, that's the sort of messing going on there. I don't know where his allegiances really lie at the end of the day. But Mead will be frustrated. In terms of your original question about whether there's a chink in Dublin's armor, like there has to be based on these performances. Um like again it's not a case that Dublin were unbelievable in that first half it's that decision went for them there was a six point swing Mead probably dropped the heads went in a half time so far down and then to let it, this doesn't I think Dublin's such high standards and the rootlessness they beat these teams is the reason you should be worried mm. and, and to be fair I think a lot of from what I've seen people are worried it's not just uh, outside Dublin it feels like inside Dublin that people are worried and the Stephen Cluxton situation isn't good whatever's going on there the fact he hasn't retired one way or the other, the fact he hasn't announced that he won't be there for the rest of the season. And again, he's fully entitled not to be, but it's the fact that there hasn't been any communication between him and Desi Farrell. It suggests that something's not quite right in the camp for whatever reason. And it, it, it is, it's, it's, it's kind of mind boggling the way this has happened. And it's all unfolded almost away from the TV cameras. Like the fact these games are on GA Go means a lot of people haven't watched them. The fact they've been clashing with, again, Munster final, not even Munster Heron final. Is the reason for people haven't watched this. So I guess the first time we'll have a proper look at Dublin for most of the country will be against Kildare, who, who kind of limped over the line against Offaly. You know, it was a good game against Westmead. It was an entertaining highlights, but another kind of performance. You kind of go, mm, you know, two fourteen mm -hmm. eighteen. You know, this Westmead scored two more than them scores wise. So I expect them to come through that by you know the seven, eight, nine, ten points. Well, yeah, you would you would be concerned like and. It was it a case that if Kerry got to the final last year, they would have beaten Dublin. Like maybe I don't know. It it, it just it it's it, it. I do expect Dublin to have enough too strong for Kildare, too strong for the Connacht champions either Galway or Mayo. But um, right now you'd look at Kerry and Dublin and say there's only one winner at the moment. I don't know what you you think in the matter or what you thought the highlights at all the Sunday game or yeah, I think I think it is very hard to judge until both teams have come up against a, a high high quality outfit so I think until you see that and the problem is this year with, with so few games and with everything we're not going to see a, a whole heap of games it's not like the Super 8 where you know Kerry played Mayo that time down in Killarney and, and you just got a glimpse then of what, what could happen come come all Ireland final day so it does feel like you're priming yourself for, for one or two games if you're Dublin mm -hmm. and Kerry and, and indeed Mayo I mean that's just Mayo a little bit less maybe with the, the, the kind of final or, or coming up against the Galway or someone so there is that little bit of they're just jostling for position like a formula one race um unlike the one at the weekend but it it is quite interesting to, to see the two and how the narratives are um i do think i do think we've got two teams definitely on on different trajectories and i think what happened with dublin post to be honest i think it's all happened relatively quick and i think it's post the the the, the training in a, in lockdown, I think a lot of that has has backfired for Dublin, and then a lot of people have, have kind of stepped away, and and 
there was the thing last year with Paul Mannion and, and so there's different things that's affected the Dublin camp that never never really appeared to happen under Jim Gavin I mean guys like Jack McCaffrey or, or Mannion himself would walk away for a few years and they'd come back and everything was rosy so definitely feels like it's it's different for Dublin at the minute um and I don't think their squad is where it was five or six years ago where you say you can let two two or three players go you could let a Jack McCaffrey go now I, I think if some, for example, like a Brian Fenton or, or for whatever reason said, look, I'm, I'm going to enjoy my summer now or I'm not sure it would be allowed. I think Dublin are in a less strong position when when they were a couple of years ago where they could afford to maybe have a few players go away because they had the likes of, you know, Brogan and McManaman and Keno Sullivan all, all around the panel who were, who were obviously good enough. Um, the one thing I would have a problem with is over the last two years, and certainly maybe since Desi Farrell, I don't think Dublin have managed the development of some of their players well. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's bizarre how you how you've got people like the Basquale brothers who, in any other county in Ireland, they they'd be starting, you know, mm-hmm. and and certainly um certainly even if you look at Kerry, so it is it is a weird one um with it, that with Dublin. Tough. I know you just on Basquale because I know I didn't think you played great. What game did I watch? I mean, was it the the Wexford game or whatever, whatever game you played, I was like, I'm not 100 percent sure on the, in the intercounty level. But I guess you, you might have a point there in the sense that maybe he should have been brought in a lot more during the league campaign, mm. 17, 18, 19, and maybe there hasn't been a lot. And and a lot of Dublin fans have been pointing this out when the money debate comes up that their record at underage isn't amazing. Yeah. And when you do crunch the numbers, particularly at minor level, it hasn't been what you'd expect. So maybe the other counties are catching up a small bit or. Well, what I think it is, a lot of people do say that it, it, it's uh, the bulk of the the sort of the last six in a row winning team, Kilkenny, Eric Lowndes, guys like that, all came from the one age group, Jack McCaffrey, which I think was the 2013. Under Jim Gavin. Yeah, just... under Jim Gavin. Yeah, with the under 20s and the minors. And they, they're kind of the one age group. So it is almost a little bit, a lot of people like to say it's a bit of a golden generation. Now you still have to piece it all together. 